Hello, welcome to the course SJPHY1C01 Properties of Matter and Thermodynamics. The contents of today's lecture is taken from Heat and Thermodynamics by Bridgelal and Subramanian. We'll continue to discuss topics from Module 3 Thermodynamics. In the last class, we have discussed in detail about the working of a, a Carnot heat engine, and there we have seen that the Carnot cycle is a perfectly reversible cycle. Now what happens if you operate the Carnot engine in the reverse direction? So we know that in the normal course of action, in the case of a Carnot engine, heat flows from a hot object to a cold object. Okay. So you absorb heat Q1 from the source, which is at a higher temperature T1, and you reject heat Q2 to a sink, which is at a lower temperature T2, and during this process, the working substance does some external work W. So this is the heat engine. Now if you operate it in the reverse direction, so here, the working substance absorb heat Q2 from the sink, at a lower temperature T2 and it rejects heat Q1 to the source which is at a higher temperature T1 and we know that according to second law of thermodynamics heat cannot flow from a cold object to hot object on its own so we need to do some external work on to the system so W is the external work done here on the system so this setup a heat engine working in the reverse direction is known as a refrigerator. Okay. Now in the case of a refrigerator in your home, the work is done by electricity, the external work. Okay. Now just like efficiency in the case of a heat engine, an important parameter which characterizes the working of a refrigerator is the coefficient of performance which is defined as ratio of heat absorbed at lower temperature to the work done by the external agency. So heat absorbed at the lower temperature is Q2 and work done from our analysis of heat engine, we know that this is Q1 minus Q2. So coefficient of performance P is defined as Q2 divided by Q1 minus Q2. So if you have a refrigerator which absorbs 200 joules of energy at a lower temperature and it also does 100 joule and also there is 100 joule of work done on it by the external agency and the coefficient of performance is going to be the heat absorbed which is 200 joule divided by external work done which is 100 joule this is 2 or in terms of percentage coefficient of performance is 200 percentage so you can clearly make out the difference between the efficiency of a heat engine and coefficient of performance of a refrigerator in the case of heat engine the efficiency can never be greater than 100 percent even for a carnet engine you cannot have 100 percent efficiency on the other hand for any refrigerator the coefficient of performance can be greater than 100%. Now, if the working substance is an ideal gas, and in the case of an ideal gas, temperature is proportional to heat energy. You supply more heat, the temperature is going to increase proportionally. Or Q by T is going to be a constant, so I can write Q1 by T1 equal to Q2 by T2, which is also equal to the difference of these two, Q1 minus Q2 divided by T1 minus T2. Now, if you interchange these two diagonal terms, you get Q2 divided by Q1 minus Q2 equal to T2 divided by T1 minus T2. So Q2 divided by Q1 minus Q2, this is the original expression for the coefficient of performance. So now you have another expression. So P equal to T2 divided by T1 minus T2. So you need to remember the expression for efficiency of a heat engine, which was 
T1 minus T2 divided by T1. Similarly, coefficient of performance of refrigerator. This is T2 divided by T1 minus T2. You can expect a lot of problems from this section. Finally, coming to the most important theorem pertaining to Carnot uh, heat engine. This is known as the Carnot theorem. It has two statements. The first statement says that no engine can be more efficient than a perfectly reversible engine working between the same two temperatures. A perfectly reversible engine is nothing but the Carnot engine. So, in essence, and this statement says that among all the heat engines, Carnot engine has the highest efficiency. And the second statement. The efficiency of all reversible engines working between the same two temperatures is the same irrespective of the nature of the working substance. So this we have discussed in the previous class. If you recollect the expression for efficiency, T1 minus T2 divided by T1, nowhere any material parameter is involved, which means efficiency is independent of the nature of the working substance. Okay, so this is quite obvious from the expression itself. So what we do, we will take the first statement and prove it. Okay. So you can consider two heat engines, one a reversible heat engine denoted by R and one an irreversible heat engine denoted by I. So these two engines work between the same two temperatures T1 and T2 where T1 is greater than T2. So T1 corresponds to the temperature of the source and T2 corresponds to the temperature of the seal. Now what does the Carnot theorem say? No engine is more efficient than a perfectly reversible engine. In other words, the reversible engine R is going to be more efficient than the irreversible engine I. Now there are two ways you can prove this theorem. Either you take the original theorem that is R is more efficient than I and go on to prove that this is true. Alternatively, you can take the converse theorem. So the converse theorem is that the irreversible engine is more efficient than the reversible engine. And you can go on to prove that this converse theorem is wrong. So either you prove the actual theorem or you disprove the converse theorem. You can follow any of these two methods. So in this particular case, we will choose the second option. That is, we take the converse theorem that I is more efficient than R and we go on to prove that this is not true. So we start with the assumption I is more efficient than R then we know that in each cycle I absorbs heat energy Q1 prime from the source at temperature T1 and rejects Q2 prime to the sink at temperature T2. Same way the reversible engine is going to absorb Q1 heat energy from the source and rejects heat energy Q2 to the sink. And assume that both I and R do the same amount of work W in each cycle. Now, as we said, the converse assumption efficiency of irreversible engine eta I is greater than efficiency of the reversible engine eta R. We know the expression for efficiency. This is work done divided by heat absorbed from the source. So eta i is w1 divided by q1 prime and eta r is w divided by q1. And w divided by q1 prime is greater than w divided by q1 which means q1 is greater than q1 prime. Since work done is the same in both the cases, we know the expression for work done in the case of Irreversible engine, this is going to be Q1 prime minus Q2 prime. And in the case of the reversible engine, this is Q1 minus Q2. So since both the works are equal, Q1 prime minus Q2 prime equal to Q1 minus Q2, 
or take q2 to the left hand side and q1 prime to the right hand side you get q2 minus q2 prime equal to q1 minus q1 prime and we have already shown that q1 is greater than q1 prime which means the right hand side is positive this being an equation if right hand side is positive the left hand side has to be positive which means q2 is greater than q2 prime so we have shown that q1 is greater than q1 prime and q2 is greater than q2 prime so far so good and what next let's now couple the two engines together in such a way that i drives r in the backward direction so here you see we have connected these two engines together so i works in the forward direction it absorbs heat from the source uh, absorb heat q1 prime from the source and rejects q2 prime to the sink let's now drive the reversible engine in the opposite direction so it now absorbs heat energy from the sink and rejects heat energy to the source so i absorbs q1 prime from the source and rejects q2 prime to the sink in the reverse cycle r absorbs q2 from the sink and rejects q1 to the source in other words i continues to work as a heat engine but r now works like a refrigerator so during the working of a heat engine external work is done by the system on the other hand for a refrigerator to work external work needs to be done on to the system so this external work is provided by the heat engine so this works like a self sufficient system in other words this coupled system operates like a self acting machine where the irreversible engine supplies the external work and the reversible engine utilizes it now let's look at the source and sink ends what happens to the source source loses heat energy q1 prime it gains heat energy q1 but we already have seen that q1 is greater than q1 prime which means the gain is more than the loss so the net gain in heat by the source is q1 minus q1 prime coming to the sink sink gains heat energy q2 prime and loses heat energy q2 but we know that q2 is greater than q2 prime so in other words the loss is more than the gain so the net loss in heat by the source is q2 minus q2 prime and what about the total work done so here in the case of the irreversible engine work is done by the system which is the positive work in the case of refrigerator work is done on the system which is a negative work so we have two equal and opposite works so these two cancel each other so the net external work done equal to zero it's time now to put things into perspective what is the the physical meaning of these three equations so there is a net loss in heat by the system which means heat flows out of the sink there is a net gain in heat by the source which means heat is flowing into the source so heat flows from the sink to the source and what is the net external work done the external work the total external work done equal to zero but we know that according to second law of thermodynamics if heat has to flow from a cold object to a hot object external work has to be done on the system by an external agency but these three equations mean that the coupled system continuously transfer heat from a body at low temperature which is the sink to a body at high temperature which is the source without any net external work done or unaided by an external agency this is clear violation of the second law of thermodynamics if you read the clausius statement of the second law it clearly states that the heat flows from a cold object to hot object only when 
it is aided by an external agency. So this is a violation of the second law, which means our converse assumption that I is more efficient than R is wrong. Thus, we conclude that the irreversible engine can never be more efficient than the reversible engine. Thus, we prove the corner here. Well, before winding up, let's do one quick problem. Find the efficiency of a Carnot engine working between the steam point and the ice point. So first thing first, you have to write down all the parameters in appropriate units. So here we have two parameters, which is a steam point and the ice point. So steam point is the higher temperature, call this as T1. Ice point is the lower temperature, call this as T2. Now you need to write the parameters in appropriate units. Remember, even though the SI unit is degree Celsius, since we are talking about absolute temperature, you have to always write temperatures in Kelvin. So steam point is a boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius, which when converted into Kelvin, this is 273 plus 100, which is 373 Kelvin. And the ice point, this is a freezing point, 0 degree Celsius, which when converted into Kelvin becomes 273 plus 0, 273 Kelvin. So the first step is done. Second step, write down the appropriate equation. We know that efficiency of a Carnot engine is 1 minus T2 by T1. Third step, make the substitution. So T2 is 273. T1 is 373. When you substitute it into equation, you get the result 0 0.268. And the final step, write down the answer in appropriate unit. Even though this is correct, by convention, we always write efficiency in terms of percentage. How do you convert the fraction into percentage? Simply multiply with 100. So when you do that, you get efficiency equal to 26.8%. So that's for today. So with this, we come to the end of the first section of the thermodynamics module. In the next class, we will start with the second section where we are going to discuss an important thermodynamic variable known as entropy.